Hello and welcome back or welcome to Miss Finance if this is your first time on this channel. So on the channel I'm going through the basics of accounting principles and tax principles to give you a better understanding so that when you're looking at undertaking an accountancy qualification or just trying to brush up on the basics in finance then you've got the foundation there. So today we're going to have a look at overhead absorption. So I know when I was studying this way back in the day this was definitely one of those subjects that at first I just could not for the life of me get my head around. I know a few of you in the AAT discussion forum have said that you're currently struggling with this. So let's crack on. So first of all, what is overhead absorption? What does it mean? So all it is, get the brush out, is the value of indirect costs that are not directly traceable to an activity or product. So indirect cost examples could be selling and marketing, admin costs or production costs. So in other words, in practice, the time that you'll be calculating absorption costs in is when management wants to determine the full cost of one unit of output, including proportion of the overheads. Now again, in practice, we refer to overheads as OH, so if I put this OH here, that's all I mean, I just mean overheads. And it's called absorption costing because a proportion of the fixed costs are allocated or absorbed into the product. So say if you had a building, so I'm going to draw some very funky shapes here. So this is your building. Okay. So in here, you've obviously got electricity bills, you've got rent bills, you've got rates bills, but in here, you are creating a product. So the cost to make that product here, you obviously need materials, you need people, so you need somebody to make the item from the materials. That person also needs to be fed, so you might have a canteen to feed the people. But then, in order to run the machinery, you have electricity costs. In order to use the electricity, you need a building where you pay rates costs. So, Putting it into perspective here, there is not just your standard materials or staff costs incurred when you're making a product. There's all types of different costs. So some of those are fixed costs, but they need to be allocated to a product. So again, that's called absorption costing. And that way, that way management can see exactly how much a product is costing to be created so that they can budget and forecast correctly. And if, say for instance, there's one product that's performing better than another product, then they'll make more of that product than the one that's underperforming, for example. So there's three stages, all right, pen colour. So we have allocation, we have apportionment, and then we have absorption. So let's go through each one of these in detail. So number one, allocation. So these are some costs that are incurred directly by an overhead. If you're struggling with what a cost centre or overhead is in industry or in practice, you're going to have individual nominals. You know how you've got individual nominals for like stationary, um, for you know, repairs, that sort of thing. Well, you'll have entire functions where, say, in one cost centre, you've got all marketing costs. In another one, you've got, say, all finance costs. And they're just called cost centres or overheads. That's all it is. So don't get mixed up. Don't get worried about that terminology. What we're saying here is that any marketing costs are directly allocated to the marketing cost centre. So if there's any staff that work in marketing, if there's any printing in relation to marketing, 
if there's any stationery in relation to marketing and the list goes on, then it goes into the marketing cost centre. So next, portionment. So this is where you'll have a cost. Let's take staff costs and they relate to a number of cost centres. And again, I'm abbreviating down here. That there just means number. So staff costs, you're going to have staff that work in marketing. So in the marketing cost centre, you're going to have staff that work in finance, in the finance cost centre, and you're going to have staff that are working on a project in the project cost centre. So there's ways of calculating this. So if it's staff costs, you might take well, the people who work in marketing, all their costs go to here. People who work in finance, all the costs go over here. And project, they'll go over here. Or, or what you can do is take, for example, the total cost divided by the total quantity. Let's just move that down slightly. And then you can multiply that by the quantity that relates to the cost centre. So again, if you looked at this and management knew that 30% of all costs relate to marketing, 10% all relate to finance, and then 60% all relates to projects, what you just do is, in this quantity that relates to the cost centre, you just multiply it by 60% for project work, 10% for finance, and 30% for marketing. So again, if your total cost was, let's just say, 100k, and your total quantity was say you had 50 members of staff okay then you'd get 2k here so all you do if you've got 50 members of staff and 30 10 20 here then five staff work here let's use the calculator 30 staff work in projects and then the remaining 15 staff work in marketing so to work out how many staff are in finance, just do that times by five. So you're going to have 10k over here for you 60%. You just do the 2k times by 30. So you're going to have 60k here. And then you're going to have the remaining 30k here. And that's as simple as it is. I think it does get made a little bit over complicated when you're looking at the books sometimes. at absorption. So once you've done step one and two, i.e. the allocation and apportionment to the right cost centres or overheads, we then need to find a mechanism to allow cost units that are passing through the cost centres to absorb overhead costs. So basically, we need to find out what the overhead absor absorption rate is, and they refer to this as OAR. So the actual formula for OAR, overhead absorption rate, is the budgeted production overhead divided by budgeted activity level. So there's two common examples that this can be based upon. So that's per labour hour or per machine hour. So if production is dictated or controlled by machines, you do this one. If you've got a labour intensive production process, you do this one. Okay. So what we need to note here is that the overhead absorption rate, which again, I'm just going to pop it here so that we get used to it. So the budgeted production overhead divided by the budgeted activity level is calculated using budgeted values. So OAR is calculated using budgeted hours. The key is in the word. So what we can do is we can actually apply this 
to the actual amount of work undertaken during that period to then calculate the overheads that were actually absorbed. So we're going to use this to calculate the actual overheads absorbed. So you need to learn this formula. So let's do an example down here. So company A has two production departments. Okay, so once overhead costs are apportioned, so once we've done, by this point, we've already done step one and two, these are the totals that we have. So production one, total overheads are 50k. Production two, total overheads are, let's just say, 70k. Labour hours here are 10,000 and labour hours here are 7,000. So we can apply this here, down here, and all we do is we take 50k divided by the labour hours of 10 Okay, and that's going to give you your labour hours, or your labour per hour, sorry. Similarly, if we take the 70k divided by 7k, which is 10, that is the labour per hour. So that is 5 labour per hour, so let's just make this a little bit smaller. so we can fit it all on one page. Okay. So now, so it was determined that the actual labour hours were like this. So production one had 13,000 labour hours and production two had 15,000 labour hours. So if we then take the actual hours, which is 13k, so 13,000 hours, and we times that by 5, and for the other one, if we do 15,000 hours times by 10, we get the actual cost. So that's going to be... 150k and let's work out the other one 65k so again let's make this smaller so next we need to look at the overhead under or over absorption so we're told that after all of this, the actual overheads are 160k in production one. So when we look above, so we worked out that production costs were 65k, but we're being told that actual costs are 160k. So that means that we have an underabsorption of 95k. So in production 2, we worked out that it would be 150k. So this is actually going to go really low here. Actual costs in production 2 were only 10k. So we worked it out that there'd be 150k of costs. So minus 10k, that's 140k. So this one has been underabsorbed. So in other words, we didn't put enough costs to that cost center. This has been overabsorbed. So that means that this cost center has been allocated way too much cost to it compared to what's actually happened.
so let's leave it there so i hope you found this video useful today if you like the video or you found it useful then hit the like button because it does help with the youtube algorithm otherwise consider subscribing and i shall see you on the next video